Lord Jesus. Amen. Last week, Monday, um, Dr. Elliot reminded us that um, the words that are used in the book of Revelation um, are connected to all kinds of other words and places elsewhere in the Bible. In other words, Revelation really is arguably the simplest book of the Bible to read and understand if you know the rest of the Bible. And so I gave you a handout, I hope you have the handout today about key words in this text. Uh, by all means, not all the key words in this text, but some wonderful ones we want to look at together. Right after a Bible, the next book maybe we should possess is a concordance, unless it's a Greek New Testament and Hebrew Old Testament, but concordance, because I think you could spend actually a long time, maybe forever, just tracking through the Bible where words occur and how they intersect with each other and how they inform us more and more fully all the time about God's message to us in his word. So little by little through the text for this morning, by the way, all wrapped up doesn't mean this is it, there's chapel tomorrow, um, but all wrapped up like all wrapped up when it's cold and you're in something uh, warm and comforting. So first of all, the word blessed. Blessed are those who wash their robes. This word for blessed, there's two different words, um, Hebrew and Greek. This is the one that means to be happy in spite of your circumstances because of what lies ahead. It's a powerful, durable kind of happiness. It's not frail, it's not fleeting, it's permanent because it rests on the kinds of promises that God makes to us. This is the blessed that occurs in the Beatitudes. Blessed are those who are poor in material ways by activity of the Holy Spirit in your life. That's the first one. Blessed are the hungry because they'll be filled. Blessed are the meek because they'll inherit the earth and so forth. Um, it's the kind of blessedness that faces everything that goes on around us and smiles, not in a sinister kind of a way, but in a knowing kind of a way because we know where God is taking us in the course of our life and if you think back to the beginning of the book of Revelation there is the word blessed is the one uh, Revelation 1 verse 3 blessed is the one who keeps on reading and keeps on hearing the words of the prophecy and keeps on keeping the things which have been and remain written in it not unlike the person who doesn't know how to swim, but finds themselves in deep water. Blessed is the person who's in deep water who keeps on holding on to that life vest, that life support system. That they may, going on, that they may have the right to eat the tree of life. Um, that word right in there might make us a little bit nervous as soon as we get into conversations about rights then inevitably there's a battle about whose rights or who has a right to their rights more than someone else. That's not really what this word is getting at. It's also known as authority. So it's a, a proper access to something. It's fitting. Uh, like the Gospel of John 1, 11 through 13, Jesus came to his own and his own received him not, meaning his Jewish descendancy, uh, but to those who received him, that is to say, to those who were honest about dependence on him, he gave the, here's the word, the right or authority to become children of God. To those who were conceived or generated, not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but have been generated of God. So 1 John 3 talked about, Behold what manner of love the Father has for us that we should be called children of God, and so we are. And so because of that, we have access to the tree of life that's in the middle of the garden. Now we're going all the way back to Genesis 1 and 2. Access to the tree of life. Eat from it all you want, all the time. Um, what a wonderful place to live. And the revelation of God to us is really that garden and his words and promises to us are the fruit of that tree of life. If you sit down to read your Bible, no one's going to come into your room and take it away from you and say, time's up. We do that to ourselves. But in God's economy, there's always plenty of time to spend that time 
with his word even during finals. Next, uh, enter by the gates and they may enter the city by the gates. Uh, just last Sunday, um, Gospel of John, the lessons for, for Sunday, Jesus says, I am the gate. Whoever goes in and out by me finds life and pasture and every good thing. And interestingly, is Jesus is also the narrow path that leads to the gate, which gate he also is. I am the way, the truth, and the life, said Jesus. Now outside are all these other horrible things, dogs and sor sorcerers and the sexually immoral murderers, idolaters, everyone who loves and practices falsehood but not in here. It's a wonderful thing to know that in the body of Christ, in the kingdom of heaven, there are not any of those things. It's important not to confuse the body of Christ, the holy Christian church which is invisible, with the visible extensions of that church that people build. Just like it's important to remember the difference between our human nature, corrupt as it is, and the regenerated soul inside. Inside of us is that regenerate soul that knows the truth, that loves God and loves neighbor and loves enemy. That's a very different thing than what's going on in my human nature, which is always contrary to God, inasmuch as it still, for example, hates my neighbor all too often, which Jesus says is the same as murder. But here we are inside of the body of Christ, safe in this mighty fortress. Okay, onward. Uh, I, Jesus, have sent my angel, that's a Greek word, not an English word, my messenger, to testify. Think about how God has provided us with such tremendous and enduring witnesses. Remember on the Mount of Transfiguration, Moses and Elijah, both of them bearing witness to Jesus, the law and the prophets. Think about the apostles with Jesus for three and a half years of his ministry. Think about how Paul references that more than 500 people at one time saw the resurrected Jesus in all of the other occasions where Jesus demonstrated that he had in fact risen from the dead. And then comes this word come, the spirit and the bride say come. That imperative to come five times in these verses with us this morning takes you back to Luke 14 where there was a great banquet and the master sent messengers to invite the people but they all had excuses too busy to come and the master was angry and sent his servants back out into the highways and the byways to compel the people to come in. And this was their message, come for all things are ready now. It's not accidental that we come to um, public gatherings. We come together as the body of Christ bringing nothing except our need and our desire to have God fill that need. Come, for all things are ready now. And later in that message, um, the messengers from the uh, banquet giver said, and still there is room. Think about how those two uh, um, messages work together. Come, for all things are ready now, and still there is room. And so we continue to bring that message to other people. It also might make you think of Isaiah 55. Behold, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you who have no money, come, buy and eat. Yes, come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Here comes the law after that gospel. Why do you spend money for what is not bread and your wages for what does not satisfy? Listen diligently to me and eat what is good and let your soul delight itself in abundance. Incline your ear and come to me here and your soul shall live and I will make an everlasting covenant with you the sure mercies of David. And then finally, at the end, there's this last come that says, surely I am coming soon. And many of us feel like, come Lord Jesus, although right now we're conflicted. Do you want Jesus really to come like right now and not graduate after four years of work? Or would you now be good because then you don't have to worry about graduating? Think about Paul in Philippians 1 hard-pressed between these two desires, 
right? A desire to depart and be with the Lord because that's far greater, but a desire to stay because there's need for Paul to stay as an apostle. As an apostle, same for us. And so it's kind of like that word for happy in spite of your circumstances because of what lies ahead. Blessedness because we're held in kind of a blessed tension. What could be better than to look forward for what God is surely bringing us to what could be better than to have the best of all things to spend our time at while we are still here? And finally, no adding or subtracting from God's word. It's important to know that over the history of 2,000 years or more, many people have tried to get many other words into the canon of the Bible and were unable to. And also through history, people trying to take out of the canon of our Bible uh, some of the content of it and were unable to. We have a stable and enduring and reliable and powerful and inspired word and witness from God in our hands, this living water. And so the Lord invites us, come without money and without price, drink from this living water. Come soon, Lord Jesus.